Praise is the act of an expressing gratitude and appreciation to God. So if you write notes down, here's a definition of praise. It is the act of expressing gratitude and appreciation toward God. For who He is and what He has done. A way of life, His name and His and who he is and acknowledging his wonderful, righteous deeds. These are all part of praise to him. One thing I believe it's important for us to understand in church, there's a variety of things that we do. And we have a congregation that's an interdenominational congregation, meaning that you come from a variety of backgrounds of trying to understand what people do at church because you've come from some formal uh, churches, some more orthodox churches, or you come from ones that have their traditions of how they would worship, etc. But I want to teach you today a biblical process of what praise is supposed to be about. And with the kingdom life involved in it, when we are involved in talking about the kingdom of God and what is expected in the kingdom. I believe the kingdom of God, the kingdom life, is a life of praise. Yes. As we've read in Psalms 100 and verse 4 in your bulletin, you have it again that we enter his gates with thanksgiving, we enter his courts with praise. Yes. I want you to notice one underlining word in that scripture before I proceed. And it says, <coughs> enter into. Now think about what that is saying. Unpack what the word enter means. What he is saying to us. Because many times, I don't know what that was. Oh, that, that, yeah, turn, turn the orange mic off, please. Okay. I thought something was behind me. You know, it's still in the monitor, so that's why you're going to... Yeah, there you go. The subject of entering in, too. Now, you came to church today, and you came through the openings that we have. Uh, the scripture teaches us the idea of entering into gates and into courts. As the psalmist was saying, because it was a style of worship, obviously, for entering into the temple worship. And the gate was the first place that had to be entered through and to open the gate so that you could come through and enter the court to where you could receive the benefits that are in the court of the temple. Because the court of the temple represented where the presence of God was dwelling. How many want the presence of God in your life? And so we understand to enter is so important. Now, I believe there's an intentionality there is on purpose in each one of us the need to enter into that which God has for us in the temple worship, in the tent worship, or in a gathering worship. That when we come together to worship, that it's because I'm here not just to have fellowship. That's wonderful. And I don't want to ever uh, talk against the the love that we show with one another and the fellowship that we have with one another, but the importance of knowing you intentionally come for the reason together we are together to praise God together. And we enter the gate. And so I mentally, heartfeltly, whatever the physical putting myself in the presence of making sure I have the opportunity now to praise God, put myself, given the opportunity to do the things that are necessary to bring about the presence of God because it's the presence of God in this place that makes all the changes that you and I need in our life. Would you agree with me on that? Yeah. That's a good place to say amen sometimes. Over 250 times in Scripture is the phrase, praise the Lord. 250 times, and so there's a obviously a need for us to say in our hearts, I've come today to praise the Lord. 
Let's say it together. I have come today to praise the Lord. Let's say it again. I have come today to praise the Lord. I'm entering the gate. I'm entering the gate that's going to bring me into the presence of God, and I do it through praise. Now, some of the things that I think are important for us to just recognize are what are some of these manifestations and expressions of the keys that unlock the gate to get into the presence. You've been, some of you have been doing it this morning, and you probably didn't even realize that it's biblical what you're doing. <laughs> Five different ones I want to mention to you this morning of things, of manifestations or expressions that help us unlock the gate that we might enter into the courts and receive that which God has for us. Part of that is clapping your hands. Amen. We believe, I believe, in clapping your hands. So it doesn't matter to me what denomination you're from. The Bible says that it doesn't say just you Baptists or just you Methodists or just you Lutheran or Assemblies of God or Pentecostal, Holy Rollers, whatever. <laughs> but the Bible says, all ye people, clap your hands. Yeah, yeah. It refers to that for us in, the, uh, in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 12, and again in Psalms 47, verses 1 through 5, it talks about clap your hands, all ye people of all nations. So let's go to that chapter, chapter 45, and get your Bible out. Let's look at some things <laughs> clapping your hands. Chapter 47 of Psalms. I want you to see it and read some of these things to you today, all right? Several scriptures I'm going to give you, but it's important that we... Uh, see it in scripture and of course I'm using the NIV which everybody's happy with so look at that all right verse one clap your hands all you nations shout to God with cries of joy how awesome is the Lord most high the great king over all the earth he subdued nations under us people under our feet he chose our inheritance for us the pride of Jacob whom he loved and so it was referring to the fact that we clap our hands. And I believe me, church, we need an opportunity to clap our hands. If you go to a ball game, right. you don't find anything uh, uh, hesitating when your team makes a touchdown to do a variety of silly things. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you make fools out of yourself. Yeah. And that's okay. It's expected. Yeah, Constantine's one of them. Come on. by clapping our hands. When we see something that we appreciate or that excites us, something that causes us to respond, one of the things we do is... Yes. It's incredible how we start clapping our hands and responding in this process, and it's a natural response. And this is a key. So when we're singing songs, like we sing, Come bless the Lord. All ye servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Now, if you sing that clapping your hands, it has a whole lot more meaning than come bless the Lord. All ye servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And yet you are, have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. We celebrated it today Hallelujah. through communion. Something to clap about. I don't mean that every time you hear the name Jesus, you have to go like that. But you know what? Maybe we should. There should be a spontaneous reaction of something because remember, clapping is a key that unlocks the gate to get in to the court. Yes. Clapping at most of the... Let's go back and use the illustration of a ball game. Go Ducks. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and Beavers won last night. They're yeah. over Woo! time. So wow. all you Beaver fans. Yeah. Okay, oh, anyway. <laughs> <that's it. laughs> Opportunity to clap, you Beaver fans, and you didn't even go there. All right. <laughs> Okay, duck fans. <laughs> oh, now we're real spiritual, aren't we? 
But I can't emphasize enough these natural responses. Does the pastor expect the people to respond as your shepherd? Yes. I expect you to be involved in the service, yeah. to participate in worship. Yeah. I yeah. believe that when we come together, I cannot do this alone. Right. Let me put it this way. I don't want to do it alone. Right. That's no fun in doing things alone. I don't even like to eat alone. I like being with you in a time of worship and clapping so we're all doing it in unison together. There's such a oneness in that it's a key. And if I don't use the key, then I can't unlock the gate that I'm told to enter into. Enter into His gates. Wow. Let's go to something else. Somebody mentioned I heard you singing. And thank you, Stan, for singing so much. And I want to say, Rob, as well, all the singing. He's been leading worship for so many weeks while Stan's been out running 60, around. 64. And, uh, yeah, right. We've forgiven the heathenism over here. And we yeah, right. uh, give it a bad time. Uh, but God blesses us with people that are talented and able yeah. to yeah. sing. Yeah. And... Uh, Stan used most of my scriptures, so let's see what I can find that's left in the Bible after Stan. How about Psalms 97? I know he wrote, read uh, Psalms 95. Let's go to 97. Psalms 97. Psalms 97. Psalms 97. And go down to verses 8 and 9. Zion hears and rejoices, and the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth, and you are exalted above all gods. 98, verse 1. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. This is Psalms 98, verse 1. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has recommended his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Look at verse 8. Let the rivers clap their hands. Yeah. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord and he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people with equity. Wow. Sing to the Lord a new song. Let me ask you this. How long has it been since you have sung a new song for the Lord? Just your own song. And now and then you'll hear somebody say, well, I wrote a song. I did this and that. I believe every one of us have a song within us that God gives you. And I believe even to the point he gives you a song for every day you live. So when I wake up in the morning, I can have a song. It's not just to sing in the shower, but it's a song about the Lord. Think about what it does when you start thinking about having a new song. Yeah. It causes you to think of Him. If you just had a phrase, if you just had a phrase, and I said for you to sing a new song about His good works, what would it <coughs> sound like? Someone... About his good works. Yes. The Lord is good. He is righteous forever. How about you? Just that simple of a song. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Somebody has a song. The, yeah. I heard it. A new song. Don't be, you know, God doesn't, he says make a joyful noise to the Lord. Right. He doesn't care if you're on tune or not. But, but he does want you to be able to articulate by somewhat expressing what I feel about the Lord right now. He's wonderful to me. He's gracious to me. I'm an overcomer because of Jesus. He loves me. He saved me. I heard Nancy say that. He's washed, yes. Thank you, Russ. It's all about Jesus. Jesus. 
Go on, a song, church. Yeah. A new song. Yeah. There you go. Come on, Russ. God with the voice of Brian. Hosanna. Yeah. God with the voice of Brian. Yeah. Praise Him. Praise Him. Amen. Thank you. That's the point I want you to get to. Is that there's a response within your belly. Yeah. Your solar plexus, we call that. To where there's a response to what you want to do. And this new song is one of the keys. Think about it. You say, I want to praise the Lord. Begin with a new song. Yeah. It's a key that unlocks the gate to get into his presence in the courtroom. So important for us to learn that. Shouting. <laughs> we read that just a moment ago, didn't we? Uh, Psalms 100 again. Just look down there in verse 1. In Psalms 100. All these verses are just so powerful they just leap off the pages to me. But shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful song. There it is. Yeah. The things that are tying together. A new song. Clapping hands. Now it's uh, shouting unto the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord. All the earth. Wow. Hmm. You know what I'm going to ask you, don't you? Do you have a shout? Yes. If I just made a touchdown, it's the fourth quarter. 30 seconds left and I'm one touchdown behind or I can win the game with a field goal and I make it what happens in the stadium 56,000 people shout on and on it goes and you and I because of who we are in God realize there's an opportunity for us to shout. This is not just for Pentecostals. Right. <laughs> he doesn't take, label who is to shout. All of us right. shout for joy to the Lord, yeah. all the earth. Yes. Wow. Think about it now. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. And we're going to shout as loud as you can about your salvation. Think about being saved. The blood has washed away your sins. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He has conquered death, hell, and the grave. He has allowed us, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to come in us and to empower us to live a Christian life. Amen. Do I hear a shout? Yes! of Israel has protected them for 400 missiles. Yeah. Oh well, that's nice. <laughs> Think about it, church. God wants us to be shaken out of our comfort zone. He wants us to get to a place to where somebody can say there's something different about that church at Walker. Because we are not just settling for just Mediocreism. Right. Jesus said, "If you're mediocre, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth." Right. Right. Yeah. He wants us to cross over, yeah. get into that place. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Tim, you got your hand raised. Back. Be bold. I don't know, but I've been told God is the best for my soul. <laughs> there you go. All right. Did you hear? Thank you, Tim. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> But shouting is a real part of yeah. our Hallelujah. key yeah. to entering. Yeah. I find myself at times when I find a break or a blockage in my prayer life that I have to spend maybe a moment and just start saying, God! 
Yeah. Hear me. Yes. God, I believe in you. I know who you are. You've answered prayer before. God, Amen. there needs to shouting displays desperation. Yes. If you know you're drowning, you will shout for help. Yeah. If you know you're being taken, things are being robbed from you, you're going to shout for somebody to defend you yeah. and to help you. Yeah. Church, we need to shout all the more for the power of God to be loosed in our lives, loosed in our hearts and in our homes. When I see my kids not living for God, I want to shout to God, God save them! If I saw a rattlesnake rolled up in my baby's crib, I wouldn't just say, oh, well, nice snake. <laughs> I would do everything with my, my power to holler at someone, help me get rid of that snake and help me kill it so it doesn't harm one of my little ones. Yeah. Yeah. When I see you as a church member of this church and as your pastor and see the struggles that you go through, I see the earnestness that you want to seek God, but I see the battles that you're fighting. I want to shout for you. Say, yeah. God, help them. Yeah. Deliver yeah. them. Set them free, Lord. Yeah. Give them a new desire to serve you. Yeah. That's Hallelujah. the shout Hallelujah. God wants us to shout. Yes, Lord. The key to unlocking the door, the gate, so I can enter in. Yes. I need to shout. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 says, I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger or disputing. Psalms 28, verse 2 says, Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help as I lift up my hand towards your most holy place. Lifting up hands. Lifting up holy hands. Understanding that if I want to enter in and stand on holy ground, I've got to lift up holy hands that unlock the door and the gate that will let me enter in to His presence. You and I have a responsibility. When we talk about holding up hands, when you hear songs that are sung and the music group does such a wonderful job leading us into worship. Lifting up our hands is a biblical manifestation that God wants us to perform. You say, well, I'm not comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it holding out. Yeah. If you were drowning, You'd have your hands up yeah. for somebody to reach down yeah. and have something to grab a hold yeah. of and pull you out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I, I'm too bashful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't gonna happen, is it? No. There has to be this. Hands up is yeah. a sign of surrender. Yeah. If somebody was here right now and put a gun in your back, most of us would. Yeah. <laughs> We would surrender besides pulling out our own gun and bang. <laughs> but the logical thing or the normal process is that we lift up our hands when we are in those kinds of moments. I think another thing that has to happen, and we've been doing it, there's a reason why we have a wonderful piano player. Yeah. We have a great trumpet player. Yeah. We have some Mediocre guitar player. <laughs> oh, wow. I give you guys such a bad time. I'm sorry. I, I can't help myself. I just fall into that one. I love these guys. Love them all. Musical instruments, the playing of instruments, is so biblical. It's so profound. If you play something, you not you need to be. All of us need to be. My dad used to call these hands when we clap, ten string instruments. Oh yeah. That's what my dad would call them. Use your ten-string instrument to give praise to God. Yes. You, Clapping wow. your hands. Yeah. Turn with me to Psalms 145. Powerful verses. 
there's just so much to read, but I want to just express oh, a couple of, hit some spots in, in Psalms 140, um, 145, first of all. I don't know, Larry, if, if you know the trumpet, uh, what's it, Driscoll that played uh, yeah. I Exalting? Phil, Phil Driscoll. Phil Driscoll. Phil Driscoll. Do you, can you play any of that right now? My favorite song in all the world for a trumpeter. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, right now. Right now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the song's entitled uh, that uh, I Will Exalt Thee. your name forever and ever every day i will praise you and exalt your name forever and ever great is the lord and most worthy of praise his greatness no one can fathom one generation will commend your works to another they will tell of your mighty acts they will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and i will meditate on your wonderful works they will tell of the power of your awesome works and I will proclaim your great deeds. And they will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, yes. slow to anger, yes. and rich in love. Yes. Verse chapter 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and I will praise all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes or immortal men who cannot save. When their spirits depart, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob. Wow. And if you go over to 148, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights and above. Praise him all his angels and praise him all his heavenly hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they are, were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, your great sea creatures and all ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do this bidding. Your mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers of earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above earth and the heavens. Amen. Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. 
Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Thank you, Larry. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourines and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Wow. Praising the Lord is done as we open the gate, the keys, the clapping, the singing, the shouting, the lifting of hands, the playing of instruments, all for the purpose that I can open the gate and enter into the court. And as I enter into the court, I have entered into his presence, and his presence brings rewards. Let me read you a couple of things and then I'll close. I have no idea what time of day it is. And it doesn't matter. No. Well, I do know it. It's two o'clock. No, it's not. <laughs> Let me just say this quickly and I'll give you some scriptures so you can look them up later. Okay? The results of being in the court. When I open the gate, I've come in through all those manifestations I just shared, and there's probably more that we could share, but that's enough for today. But the results are what I need. What you need today are results. Right. What Mark Sneed, my buddy, what he needs today is results yeah. Yeah, sure. of being in the presence of God yeah. to help him through his grief and his loss. As I talked to him, he just blown away. So Randy, I just, well, he called me pastor. <laughs> pastor, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to make it. You've got to be in the courtroom. Russ, it's in the courtroom. Yeah. It's beyond the gate into a presence that changes the elements, that changes the circumstance. Yeah. And when we're in the courtroom and praise has taken place, it will defeat our enemies. Yeah. Second Chronicles 20, 22. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. God's people began to praise and their enemy was defeated. Yeah. If you have an enemy in your life today, it will be defeated as you're in the courtroom of Almighty God. Yeah. It will break the bonds you're praising and being in the courtroom of the Lord. In Acts 16, a wonderful story. Paul and Silas being in prison, being chained, and they're singing at midnight yes. and praising God. And the other prisoners were listening as they were worshiping God. And what happened? The chains that were binding them were broken in the name yes. of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the difference when you're in the courtroom. Yep. After you've entered through the gates, things start happening in your life. Changes take place. And it says in verse 25 of Acts 16, at about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all of the prison doors flew open yeah. and everybody's chains yes. were loosed. Yes. I say to you today, as you come into the courtroom of Almighty God, with your heart being open to Him, as you have expressed through clapping, singing, shouting, and as you have lifted up your holy hands to the Lord, that He now will loose yes. You. Yeah. He will loose yeah. you. Jesus. That which has bound you is loose yeah. in the name yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. The bitterness, the loneliness, the sadness, the defeatism, it's loosed. Yeah. <coughs> it's loose. Your addiction is loose. 
no longer having you under control, no longer binding you. It has fallen off. Shake your hands. Loosen the chains. Loosen the chains. Kick your feet. Get the leg braces off. Get those chains off your legs. I feel God is doing something. And as we praise Him, God will keep His word. And this is where I'll close today. Thank you for your patience. This is one promise that I hang on to being in the courtroom. Oh, Lord. Is that He will restore everything the yes. enemy has tried to rob. Yes. Yes. God will make it right. yes. He has promised to do that. Yes. If you want a good Bible study, look at Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 5 through 12. Or look at the story of Job chapter 42, yes. verses 10 through 12. And you, both places, you will see the children of Israel in Nehemiah reestablished the walls in Jerusalem because they reestablished those walls in Jerusalem. In chapter 8, they talk about the celebration that the children of Israel are having, and Ezra is reading the word of God, and they begin praising God. And Nehemiah, Ezra tells the people, Be happy! Be joyful. Yeah. Go out and have a good meal. He literally tells them that. Because God has restored everything He said He would restore. Yeah. And He did it in a record amount of time. 52 days yeah. they rebuilt the walls yeah. oh, in Jerusalem. Wow. When they were told it was going to be impossible. Yep. It's God with Israel. God's with Israel. Yeah. And they know God will restore everything they're going through right now presently. God will restore. Yes. For your life, whatever you're going through, God will restore. Yes. Those things the enemy has tried to take away from you, whatever the relationships are, whatever the heartache is, whatever the job circumstance has been, whatever the financial circumstance you're going through, yes. the physical yes. illnesses that you might be, God will restore. Yes. And for Mark, for Russ, for those that have lost loved ones recently, God will restore yeah. in your heart that which you need to have. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll provide for you. Job, we know that God multiplied every blessing. Everything Job lost was multiplied blessings back to him. Totally restored. Because God promised to do it for Job. And if he did it for Job, because Job was in the presence of God. He never left the presence of God. And God blessed him by restoring everything he needed. Today, whatever you need, God is able to defeat the enemy in your life, to break the chains that bind you, to loose you, to restore to you, then always remember when you are praising in the courtroom, it will always, always bring victory. It will always bring victory. How many want to be on the winning side? Hallelujah, yes. If you want a picture of that, turn to the book of Revelation and read about what happens, folks. Multitude upon thousands of angels rise up and begin to sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the King has come. Hallelujah. There's victory. There's victory. Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you, Lord, because you love us so much. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to not only open the gates, but to walk into the court yeah. and into your courts yeah. and receive yeah. the opportunity of your presence where sacrifice takes place. Yeah. Where so many things in relationship to our relationship with you yeah. begin to take place yeah. in that courtroom area. Yeah. 
Work in the lives of individuals today. Bless them, I pray, in every area that we've talked about. While your heads are bowed. <coughs> Maybe there's someone here today that you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart. You need a Savior. You want Him to free you from your sins. <coughs> Loosen the binds that have been holding you. Those bonds and those things that have kept you chained down. And you want to break through those things. Just raise your hand. I can see it. Nobody else is looking around. I want to pray with you all. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Lord, you see these hands that are raised. Several are. Lord, we need forgiveness today. We need forgiveness by the power of the Holy Spirit that will come into us and has been convicting us and speaking to us. But by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, we believe that you're our Savior and your blood washes yeah. away our sins. Yeah. So forgive us right now. Yeah. And loose us from any habits, circumstances in our life that have been holding us down. We just loose that now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord the work that you're doing. Yeah. We believe that you are the Son of God. We believe that you rose from the dead and that you're our soon coming King. We'll serve you. May there's others in the congregation this morning that you have needs in your life as well that you need special prayer for. You need help to bind together. And you just want to raise your hand and say, Pastor Randy, pray for me. Yes, in these areas of my life. In the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, you Amen. see those that have raised their hand. And Lord, we don't know all the circumstances, but we know that you can bring healing, Amen. Lord, where there's been division, Lord, where there's harm in any way, where there's loss in any way. Lord, you've promised to restore relationships. You've promised to restore all these things, Lord, that only can be done by you. Bless your people now. Amen. I pray they'll be refreshed, they'll be strengthened, Lord, they'll be helped. They'll find an answer. They'll receive wisdom all from you today yeah. concerning their needs. Yeah. We pray it in Jesus' name. Yeah. In yeah. Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. Yeah. Lord, we give you praise yeah. for yeah. all that you've done. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's stand together, shall we? Amen. Bless your heart.